everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel, Julia McNeil Crafts. So today we are playing with the jelly plate. This is a mahoosive one. Absolutely mahoosive. Oh, excuse the avalanche of craft stuff next to me. This is like a 12 by 14. So if I show you, there they go. There's no four bit of paper. It's really weird. I'm looking at the camera and it's upside down, but it's because I'm attempting to film um, for both... Um, Instagram and YouTube all at the same time and the Instagram reels kind of need to be on portrait and that's not how I film. I film in landscape for doing YouTube. Um, so I've got my phone filming for Instagram and my camera filming for YouTube and yeah it, so the the only way I could get the angles so that uh, you weren't seeing the phone being filmed was it's affected the way I'm seeing what is on the screen. It's kind of upside down for me. Um, so it's just a bit strange. <laughs> I'm getting used to it. So I'm going to pull out some paints. I want to see if I can create tartan so jelly print. I pulled pulls. out a whole load of um, paints, um, and we're just going to see. So I, as you know, I'm Scottish, and yeah, I was. I finally done something with this jelly plate. Now, this isn't going to be a perfect tartan because, um, yeah, I'm not doing it with very straight line, lines, it's freehand. But, I, as you know, I'm from Scotland and, um, yeah, I quite like to do things with a Scottish nod. So some of my artwork and things I have um, created tartan effect using my alcohol pens. Um, I did a live on tartan colouring a while back. Um, and as I was playing with my gel press with my daughter the other day, I wondered, I wonder if I could create a sort of tartan effect <laughs> with the gel press, because it would be a bit funky and it would be a bit distressed. And as I said, this isn't going to be perfect because I've not, I mean, I could get a ruler out and all of that sort of stuff but quite frankly I would stop enjoying myself and crafting is all about enjoying yourself. So I've got some white down first because I kind of thought that would be um, whatever goes down first is kind of your foreground colour on a gel plate I think. <laughs> I'm about to find out. So um, basically I'm just going to paint stripes one way and then another to almost create like a tartan effect and we shall see what occurs. So this is quite different. Normally when I am jelly plating I will be I will have my brayer out. And I've just realised I think I didn't start recording on my on well we'll do a first pull. <laughs> and if it works I will um press record on my phone. Yeah. Not 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 very used to this. It's because um I've seen I'm going to um, have a little look. If 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 it goes well, um, I will maybe do a little video on social media for crafters. But like, I've definitely not got the largest channel in the world. I don't have the largest Instagram account in the world. Um, so I'm not sure that I'm an authority on the subject. But um, I have a friend um, with curly hair. She's called Marisa Curls, and she. Um, has about 74,000 um, followers on her Instagram and she's a good friend of mine and um, she um, has now been able to give up her job because she's earning enough money being an influencer in her industry which is just a bit awesome. So I says to her can you help me with my Instagram because I know I'm not nearly um, making as much of that as I can. Now some tartans are sort of thicker one way than the other so I'm actually going to th um, thicken up the horizontal lines across here and we'll see how we go with this. Um, yeah so I was speaking to her and um, looking at how to make more of my Instagram account. So I've been working really hard on it actually. I've been um, sort of trying to add various um, collections and things to the stories. Um, and then if I can do that I can highlight it. So it means if you've bought like you know any of the ranges and you just want 
um, a little bit of inspiration you can now check the highlights I'm gradually building it up and they're all sort of in the one place so sort of yeah this is going to be a very loose interpretation <laughs> of a tartan um, but yeah we'll just we'll see how we'll see how it goes it was just an idea I mean, what's the worst that can happen? It's a bit of paper and a bit of paint. If it doesn't work, it's fine. But anyway, so one of the things she discussed with me was the use of reels. And basically, at the beginning of lockdown, um, TikTok suddenly became a lot more popular than Instagram. And of course, Instagram people are like, eh, 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 we're not having that. So they put their version of um, TikTok into it so they incorporated it into Instagram which is Reels um, and so I was thinking right okay and my friend agreed that I need to sort of try and get the Reels side of things under well not under control but try, try and focus on it and actually as I looked there's not many crafters that are using that function um, so I've tried it and I tried my first reel and after my first reel I had way more engagement on that than in any other inst Instagram post that I've ever done and I've also gained I have to I have started screenshotting it just in case it does seem to work and I do end up getting a lot more followers over it um, but I think I've gained about 40 odd followers so far um, and that's in a very short space of time for me so if it continues to be somewhat successful I may do a sort of Instagram for crafters only if you're interested if you're not then I'll not bother but it was just a thought I'm quite liking this isn't going to turn I kind of knew it wasn't going to turn out a perfect tartan or plaid I wasn't really expecting that at all um, it was always going to be slightly grungy but that's why I thought that's what would that I thought that's what would make it a little bit different so let's go should we go a little bit of yellow in there as well and then we need to sort of let that dry a little bit and then put a a base a, a pool coat on if that makes sense and then we'll see if this worked fairly well what I will do is um, film it again because I forgot to press play on my phone because you know this whole concept of trying to it's trying to make the time that I'm videoing making the most of the time um, you know so that I'm not sort of filming you know for one thing and then for another it's sort of trying to make what you're making work for various elements but yeah I think this could be fairly interesting Definitely going to be a sort of a grungy look, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Because I quite like, as I said, I like sort of to add that nod to Scotland into some of my work. I've got some very Scottish themed work, but um, I had grand plans for using that. Um, and yeah, they all kind of went astray when COVID-19 hit, so. And it doesn't look like we're going to be getting out the grips of that anytime soon, so... <laughs> when it will actually come to flourishing I don't know but yeah I quite I quite want to sort of incorporate tartan into my work and of course if this doesn't overly work brilliantly um, you we can define it afterwards by sort of putting um, what do you call it like a definite white and black lines on things yeah we're sort of blending everything together there. That's working quite well. I need it to be a bit thinner though, I think. Right, so I think that's... <laughs> we're going to have to... I'm just going to pause that and sort of... Trouble is, you can't get a heat gun to it because, you know, you're going to damage your jelly plate and that's not sensible. So I'm just going to have to maybe get a sheet of card and try and waft it a little bit until it's a little bit drier. Um, and then we will sort of put a base coat on and attempt to do a pull. I have let this dry a little bit but it's still quite wet so it's going to splodge a little bit um, but I'm going to live with that and see how we get on. So right now I just want a, a white, this is a brand new paint, <laughs> I've literally just opened it so it's going to I've just realise it's going to need the bit off here um, taken off as well. 
the only white paint I've got unfortunately and I'm not sure I think white paint works better than um, a gesso in this instance to be honest so um, the first layers should be dry so let's get a bit of that on there I'm just going to work that onto my brewer and oops it is moving a little bit that's okay um, you need to sort of make sure that your brayer is covered with the paint first um, you don't want it too thick so we've probably got way too much on there but one advantage of this being the most massive no, I don't know there must be a hair there must be a hair on my yeah the, there's a hair on the brayer I was trying to work out where those striations were coming from but it's it's from the brayer <laughs> yeah anyway interesting texture that's fine but yeah one advantage of oops one advantage oh dear one advantage of this being a completely mahusive um, gel plate is that actually I can clean my brayer on the other side of the gel press and that's going to um, get me some interesting stuff going on that side as well. Right, it's a bit patchy but we'll see how we go. It's, the thing is, the jelly plate is all just about having, having fun. Let's just give this a good press down and we will see what occurs. Ooh. I like it's definitely not tartan tartan but I, I really like the riot of the colours <laughs> that we've got going on there right I'm just going to detach this hair from my brayer okay, so yeah that was quite funky wasn't it it wasn't quite what I was expecting I'm actually going to go with a coloured background um, for the next print and see what difference it makes. I think I've lifted the hair off but to be honest now it almost looks slightly stained. <laughs> um, like it looks like it's cut into the actual brier which is very strange. Ah the groovy thing is we can clean up over here. Oh I just love this gel. It's so cool. Right let's get this down and what is really exciting is how many prints and lifts you can get. Um, from your um, gel press. So probably what I will do is that we've done this experiment together which is pretty cool. Um, I might just leave it at that and um, try some more. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I'll just show you the prints when we've finished. Right. Probably it should be over this but my brayer's monkey and I've kind of run out of desk space. We're still getting loads and loads of prints. <laughs> well, that's quite cool. Now, actually, by the time you, if I let that dry, uh, actually, I might do that. By the time I let that dry, if I actually went with a ruler and black pen and white pen, we could actually probably make that look really quite, quite tartany. Um, let's go for the white again. See if we can get a final lift off this. This is going to look really quite distressed. the ability to talk so you kind of want to be able to it should be your white layer on the top should be sort of semi-transparent to get a decent lift from it um, but we will see how we go so let's just get another another press and then that's said I might do the rest Clean my gel. The best way to clean your gel press is just to keep taking um, more pulls from it. Um, so I just keep adding bits and pieces. And, and sometimes I find sort of the end of the day cleaning up <laughs> of your um, gel press is where you get the most interesting results. Let's peel it down from this side. So this is quite a muted. That is pretty cool. I like that a lot actually. Right, let's um, have a little look. I'm just going to, what I might do actually is let's get a bit of, we'll lift this side 
and then we'll gradually lift those edges on top of this which hopefully should create a nice um, interesting interesting layer as I said I find I was doing it jelly but I've had this in my stash for ages we watched the lovely um, Queenpreneur I can link to her in um, the description box below she has a YouTube channel here but she did a live for us in all brands in the summer actually um, using the Mahusive jelly plate see that's got some of yesterday's yesterday it was my daughter that was using orange and stuff and I said I think this is definitely where you get your most interesting lifts and prints so it's just about um, putting a bit of a bit of something on to the bits that have still got paint stuck there. I'm not bothered about getting it perfect because as I said there was some lifts coming from yesterday. Like there. That's the oranges yesterday but the pink bits today. But I do find that cleaning up cleaning up your gel press is I think you're definitely I don't tend to overly think these things anyway. I think with the jelly press it's been able to um been able to just it's one of those things you sort of lose the control and I do, I, I like things like that in, in my artwork, just the ability to um, give up control to your products because um, I think you, it, what you can end up with can be absolutely amazing um, and you could never have attempted, it was something that maybe would just never have formulated in your head to ever do. Um, and that kind of happens with the gel press anyway, but definitely when you're just cleaning up. Because basically your your only purpose in doing this is like let's clean my jelly plate, and yet what you can what can be the occurrence can be quite incredible. And that's just looking very very interesting. Just see if I can get these last few bits up, and then I will probably call that done. Because it gets, to be honest, it's fairly it's fairly clean um, now. But this. Um, and what's left will be some unexpected surprise in another day's crafting. Now, I did say I was attempting to film this and film it on my phone at the same time for Instagram. That didn't really work, so I will be doing another pull um, and filming that just on my phone. Um, but yeah, so if you want to see, because those whatever I do on my phone is going to turn out slightly different to what I've done here. Um, I'm not, I can probably show you the results because I, I do think for at least two of those we could turn into some form of tartan by adding some line work with our pens. Again, just, just off on that. And yeah, it doesn't look overly much now, but that is an amazing background um, for the future. A bit of stamping on that, a bit of stenciling. It's amazing how you can bring that together. Um, yeah, so I will be back when... Let's have a little look at the prints as they are now. That was my mop-up print, which is very interesting. Um, that was the one we did with the pink background, which I like. As I said, I think that's the one that we can maybe make look the most tartany. Um, I do like this first one as well. I think that's pretty good and then we had this one here as well so probably these two i will keep as is and we will use that in a project maybe let's maybe come together and use some of these backgrounds to make something and these two i am going to try and come in with a pen when it's really really dry and let's see if we can sort of make a sort of plaid or tartan as that's kind of what the object of the exercise was today okay so these are the two prints that mostly resemble a sort of very loose <laughs> plaid effect um, I like these two, but it's um, those were like, you know, what we were pulling off. Um, they're pretty cool, but um, seeing as what we're trying to demonstrate is creating a sort of a very distressed plaid effect, I am now going to go on and do some line work. So I've got a ruler. I love this thing because it's great for gripping. I'm going to get my black first. I'm actually going to use the chisel end of this. <laughs> for some of it and I'm going to almost try and um, find find areas where the checks are so again oops. I'm going to go down like this because we've got 
bits of chips of paints on it. it this is not an even surface so our black line isn't even but to be honest nothing else is so um as I said it's kind of almost like just going with it if we wanted an accurate played effect this is not the technique to use but um, I didn't want that I wanted something a bit funkier <laughs> we're doing that but this will help to as I said sort of create that illusion and we're not going to be using it, oops we're not going to be using it as a whole piece like this anyway either it's going to be like cut up and um, used in different different ways so so I've used the thick one this side okay I'm going to turn it now and we will use now use the um, bullet nib. Okay, so I'm not even sort of overly lining this because although I've got measurements on the ruler, I don't know if the if the <laughs> one underneath is uh, is straight. If I don't know if the paper is overly straight. So I'm just going to keep doing that. Okay. So I've finished that and I've now got a... Actually I'm going to... This is a thicker pen so I'm going to go opposite to the way I've done it with the black. I'll do the thicker ones um, horizontally and the thinner ones vertically. So I, I've now got this and I knew I, knew I was going to struggle with the white more because white pens seem to be the bane of my life. Let's try to give it another little shake. suppose it's overly happy at going against a ruler either but we'll see how we no. oh, hang on. we have to get this activated there we go Oops. yep well it's going to be grungy Oops, I need it this side of the line I don't think I've got the best pen for this but yeah, let's just, I'm going to try wiping that up a bit and we'll go with a different pen. That's just not quite, not quite working as I would wish. Okay, I've got my Jane Davenport pen, which, white pen, which I don't find overly opaque. Um, so I'm going to just use that on these lines here. And then we will try and use a different pen for the vertical lines. It at least give us some sort of effect. That's gone a bit cloudy down the bottom where I've wiped it. But again, just remembering that we're not using, when we actually start to craft, we will not be using this as an overall piece. It will be um, chopped into, either die cut, paper pieced, ripped and torn. We'll have a play. So what I'll do is after I have finished making this. I'll chop it down because it always looks better when it's actually sort of chopped down into its square. Um, but then we will maybe do another video where we create something using these funky played effects that we have created. And I've not even gone overly even even either. <laughs> right, I'm running out of space on my desk. I'm trying to keep the shot in the camera but it's also giving <laughs> giving my paper nowhere to go. There we go. So that's me as the Jane Davenport paint over pen. I think I'm going to have to most likely do it for the vertical ones as well because I think I'm going to have the same splodgy effect with my other ones. And although I've got the sort of uniball ones, this is quite an uneven surface just because of the nature of the um, jelly press. But I think we're all right. So I have shown you this, I will do the paler one exactly the same, we will do some um, vertical and horizontal lines in both black and white because that is what is going to give it that tartan effect and I will chop it down and then, but it's pretty much what you've seen me do for this one, then we will just look at them both together. Okay, I've not quite finished this one, but I have sort of put the white lines down and 
yeah, you're not really seeing them because this is a paler print. Um, so now it looks a bit too much checkerboard for me rather than tartan. So I've, what I'm going to do is I'm pulling out the other Jane Davenport pens. I don't have many of these. I have it in turquoise, pink and white. That's literally the three that I have. But I'm thinking, yeah, that because we've got the turquoise and the pink in um, these pens and these seem to be the ones that are working the best over all the texture that we've got doing a jelly print that I'm going to go with these ones um, so as I said just so that it's looking more like that tartan rather than um, just a checker a checkerboard but um, I'm going to continue doing that what I might do is just pop it on fast forward while I do that my two pieces there. I'm actually really really pleased with them. I have gone really funkily squint here but I think you're just going to have to embrace that but if that was to bother you you can just sort of use that part and then that part and cut that middle part out. Um, but as I said I'm not going to be using it as a whole sheet like this. It'll either get ripped and torn on a project or we'll do paper piecing. I don't know quite what we'll do with it but I, I just sort of had a I wonder if moment and yeah, it's turned out pretty cool. I'm quite delighted with that. So um, that is my how to make a tartan or plaid effect on your jelly press. So I hope you have enjoyed experimenting with me today. I wasn't sure if it was going to work. And uh, yeah, I've enjoyed having a plate. It's worked out well. And I will be back soon making something with it. So if you have enjoyed it here, um, I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing. And join me again very soon for some more crafty goodness. Okay, take care then and goodbye.